good morning. Good morning to everyone. I call the service to order. And how many come to praise the Lord this morning? To uplift his name. To give him the glory. For he's worthy of all the praise. And all the honor. It belongs to him. I just like to sing a little bit of this song too. Oh, how I love Jesus. Sing it, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Sing it, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Sing it, oh, how I love Jesus. Sing it, oh, how I love Jesus. Sing it, oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Now we can have um, open and selection by our choir.
said every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, as I come to to the I need the oh, I need thee. Yes, every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now. As I come to, to thee. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you in prayer this morning, oh God. We ask you, oh Father, to come in and be right in the midst. Oh, Father of this service today, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you to move from heart to heart, from breast to breast, in the name of Jesus. We ask you to have your way in this service today, in the name of Jesus. Touch someone, oh God, that they may be saved. Touch and heal the lame bodies, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Touch and heal the sick, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let thine will be done. Let thine kingdom come in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we want you to get the glory out of our lives. We want you to get the glory out of this service in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, oh God, and what you're going to do. Let thine will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Going down to the same Oh Jesus is worthy Jesus is worthy Oh he's worthy Be praise Lift your hands and praise him Come on, saints, let's praise him. Jesus. Testament by Ella Wilson. Our Old Testament scripture reading this morning will be coming from Psalms 
51, verses 10 through 15. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors their ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. May the Lord bless the reading of his word, sanctify the truths down in our hearts. As we get a selection from the choir.
want to be caught up in the rapture. My Lord, my Lord. Next we have our praise team that lift us up even higher. My Lord. Come on and bless the name of Jesus. How many of you want to be caught up in the rapture? Hallelujah. We've come to give the Lord praise on this morning. We just want to tell the Lord thank you. We just want to give the Lord thanks on this morning. How many of you thankful and grateful? Hallelujah. He brought us thus far. We've made it to the third month of a new year, and God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We're going to give God praise on this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, 
glory, glory! Bless the name of Jesus! Bless the name of Jesus! He's worthy of all the praise! He's worthy of all the honor! He's worthy of all your praise! Hallelujah! Oh Lord, I thank you! So good, so good! Hallelujah! Next, we will have the welcoming from our first lady, Lady Vicki Hughes. Oh, excuse me. We will have um, our church mother, Mother Durham. Praise God for that welcoming. We thank you, Mother Durham. Next, we will have the um, introduction of our speaker. Oh, excuse me, yes, Children's Church. First time up, so y'all excuse me. We I have the Children's Church at this time. Good morning, saints. Come on, children. All right. Spread out some more. Come on, let's do that. Praise the Lord this morning. All right. At this time, we're going to have our prayer by Sister Tiana Wilson. Will you stand? Please stand. Bow your hand. Lord, thank you for waking everybody up in our church. Thank you for welcoming everybody in our church. Thank you for blessing everybody in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And this time we'll have our scripture by Miss Elena Davis. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything... By prayer and supplication. supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses the all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we'll have our lesson review by Sister Alicia Johnson. Amen. Good morning, everyone. All right. Our lesson, we talked about new beginnings, correct? What was our lesson about? All right. New beginnings. And the scripture came from Luke chapter 3, verses 21 through 22. And so it talked about when Jesus started his new beginning and when he was baptized, that started the new beginning in, in his life. So when Jesus was baptized... Um, I mean, when who baptized Jesus? John the Baptist. 
John the Baptist, good job. All right. So um, after Jesus was baptized, was he doing any miracles or did he have to get the approval from his father? Approval from his father. Yes, good job. And so there were two important things that happened when Jesus was baptized. Does anybody know one thing that happened? Holy Spirit called him and God. The Holy Spirit came upon him and what else? God spoke to him. God spoke to him. Good job. So we all want to be pleased by God. So once he was pleased by God, then that's when Jesus started performing the miracles. Let me check. Sister Rose is going to ask a couple questions. All right. Good morning, children. Let me see how much you learned this morning. So Jesus started his ministry. Okay, um, did he start his ministry? Yes. Uh, in order to start the ministry, what he had to do first? If, you, if we were to start one, what would you do first? What can a person do first in starting a ministry? When you first start it out, first you got to do what? Holy. All right, holy. So we say we... We confess our what? Everybody said you confess your what? Yes. And then you ask God to forgive you. Will he forgive you? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. yes. All right. Does he hear your prayer? Yes. Yes. Okay, so you ask him to forgive you. And then what else happened in this lesson? It happened in this lesson. After he confessed everything, what happened? What came upon him? Say it. The Holy Ghost. What is the Holy Ghost? Happy. The Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God. It come upon you, and it led him to where God wanted him to go. It, after that, you'll find out how the Spirit of God led him. So, after you do that first, you also need to know what. If you're going to minister, what you need to know? The Bible. The Bible. Who you knows your Bible? I do. <laughs> do you know your Bible? Kind of. Kind of. Do you know your Bible? The word of God. It's the what? The word of God. You say God speaking to you. You read the word? Yes. Do you obey? Yes. You do? Yes. All right, but you obey. Yes. Okay, you didn't name a scripture? <laughs> What's the scripture that you know that you should obey God? What is the short command? Okay, you do what? Obey who? Obey who? Obey who? Your parents. Do you obey your parents? Sometimes. <laughs> so... So if we, okay. All right, last question. Last uh, question. Last question. Do you obey your parents? No. No. Anybody else, do you obey your parents? Sometimes. Sometimes. You obey your parents. Sometimes. All right. We, they're honest, because sometimes we don't always obey God, too. We know we read God's word, and we don't obey and do everything God tell us. So the children is the same way. But what we do, if we don't obey, we're supposed to do what? Ask God to what? Forgive us. Will he forgive you? Yes. And then you move on. Pray for us. All right, we're going to do Children of the Kingdom. Y'all ready? All right, oldie but goodie. All right, here we go. Children of the Kingdom, uh-huh, that's who we are. Children of the Kingdom, that's right, that's who we are. One more time, from the top, children. Clap your hands.
Praise God. Praise God for the children's church. Next, we'll have a selection from our choir, followed by the raising of the offering from our pastor. is mine. Amen. So we thank God for being here today, for God allowing us, amen, to be in the land of living. Amen. As Paul said, in him we live, we move. Amen. We have our beings on today. So we come today to give God praise, to give him glory, to give him honor for all the things that he's done. Amen. In our lives. Amen. So we're grateful for our presider. Amen. The minister Paul Freeman Jr. Amen. Doing an outstanding job. Amen. We're Amen. Our goal is objective as, amen, the leaders of the church, amen, to train our ministers, amen, prepare them, amen, for the next level of ministry, amen. So we're grateful for him on today, amen. We're also certainly happy to have, amen, the Bishop Larry Shaw. Come on, you can give it up, him. Amen. He's back home. Serves as the prelate of Virginia First Jurisdiction. Amen. Had a great lineup of speakers. Amen. During the workers' conference. Amen. We're glad to have him. He's a dynamic preacher. Amen. The conclusion of the service, I want to meet with him. Amen. To schedule the point with him. Amen. To let him come back home. Amen. Minister word to us. So we're going to compare calendars. Amen. We love him. He's a gospel preacher. Amen. I remember him years ago, he used to conduct revivals here. Amen. At New Hope Baptist Church. And the church would be packed. Preaching the gospel, amen. He has an awesome testimony of how the Lord has spared his life. So, amen. We're not going to turn the microphone over to him yet. Amen. He will tear the house down. So we're glad to have you, sir. Amen. And also, amen. We're grateful, amen, for all the clergy, all that are present on today. Jasmine is here. Janessa is here. Amen. We're glad to see them. Amen. On today, they was with us. Amen. In our Sunday school on this morning. Amen. But before we receive our offering, amen, we have our final tribute to one of our unsung heroes. 
Superintendent Leslie Thomas, who's the former superintendent of the Central District of Virginia, amen, and the pastor of the Greater Emanuel Church of God in Christ, amen, he's a loving, compassionate man of God, amen, a man who loves to be around people, love the fellowship, amen, and preaching to teach the gospel, he loved encouraging, inspiring young men, amen, I believe one of the last time that he was here, amen, he preached a message from staying focused, amen, we go through great trials and tribulations, but we may stay focused, Amen. On the prize that the Lord has called us, amen, to ministry. So the evangelist department, amen, Dr. Bobby Gino's presented gifts to Superintendent Leslie Thomas. And what she did was she had some cash money. She put it in a little box. She put it in a larger box, amen, the largest box. She started smiling. Thank you. Testifying and telling her the goodness of the Lord. So we honor Superintendent Leslie Thomas. Let's give him a hand ovation. <laughs> amen. So we thank God for him. Amen. For many of the saints, some are not here on today. Amen. I'm grateful to see Sister Rosie O's. She's back from her second vacation. Amen. She was down in Florida. I believe a couple of weeks ago she was up in, Mich up in Michigan. Amen. And we're grateful to have the, the Tally twins. Amen. They're back from their vacation. Amen. And Dr. Bobby G knows she, this morning she's on her vacation. So we, uh, we encourage the saints here at the St. Stephen Church of God in Christ. Amen. To Amen. Pay your tithes. And the Lord promised if you give your tithes to him, he will slink up with the windows of heaven, pour out blessed upon you. You will have room enough to receive. And he rebuked the devour for your name's sake. Amen. We also encourage the members here. Amen. Those even watching live stream to give their offerings. Amen. For the enhancement of the ministry. Amen. To turn down the stronghold of Satan. Amen. Through your financial contributions. Amen. We did numerous renovations. So continue to give. And we also encourage you to take a vacation. Amen. Spend time with your family, your loved ones. Amen. And send some pictures of me. Let me know you're having a glorious time. Amen. Doing your vacation. So we stand over the building to receive our tithes and offering on today. Amen. Numbers have already given through our Givelify application. But on today, if you care to give, amen, you can give uh, for our missions. Amen. You can also give to our public offering. Amen. The Ella Davis had a card machine. So you can give those numerous ways. So as we pray, God's blessing to give our tithes and our seed offering. Amen. We have a seed offering from our brother Ronnie Ford who gives constantly. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, we thank you for your loving kindness and God, for your tender mercy and grace. Thank you for an opportunity to give to you today, oh God. We pray that you bless the offering that we give and the tithes, God. Let it be pleasing in your eyesight. And God, we thank you on today. All things come of thee, Father. And so shall we have it. Give it back to you. Bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. Amen. El Rose is sharing a seed offering. Amen. We thank God for Bishop Shaw. Amen. He's dropping out the Lord.
getting ready to hear the word of the Lord and to be brought forth by Minister Kennedy and um, Rashad Kennedy. That's his, that's his first. I couldn't think of it at first. Rashad Kennedy. And we will have the introduction of the speaker by our own Ella, Ella Roderick Rose. Praise the Lord, saints. Come on and bless the name of Jesus in this house. Hallelujah. Amen. Give an honor to God and our Savior. Amen. And to our pastor and to our and to Bishop Shaw, to all those that are on the roster on this morning. Amen. I rose to introduce our speaker this morning. And this is his first time approaching us in the Sunday morning setting. Minister Rashawn Kennedy Sr. Rashawn D. Kennedy Sr. was born October 24th. 1983 in Tampa, Florida to Scott and Carolyn Kennedy. He is the third of seven children. He was raised by his great uncle and great aunt Clifford and Thelma Canty. Growing up, he attended College Hill Church of God in Christ under the leadership of Superintendent Charles Davis. Upon graduating from high school, he enlisted in the U.S. Coast Guard. I won't hold that against him and served honorably until January 2012. He is currently employed by SMA Drive Technologies as a maintenance technician. Rashawn is married to his best friend, Sister Ashley Kennedy. Between them, they have six children, Michaela, Jaden, Mariah, Mia, Maya, and RJ. <laughs> All right. The Kennedy clan joined the St. Stephen's Church of God in Christ in March of 2017. At St. Stephen's, he is a member of the Mayor Course Men's Usher Board and the Brucey e. Hughes CTAT Scholarship Committee. He serves as a YPWW teacher and he is my secretary of the men's department and he is a good secretary. He was ordained as a deacon by the late Bishop Ted Thomas Sr. General Board member in July of 2019. In June of 2021, he was appointed to the trustee board by our now pastor, Elder Bruce Elliott Hughes Sr., pastor here at the St. Stephen's Church of God in Christ. He currently serves as our pastor's armor bearer, a jurisdictional adjutant for our historic Virginia One, and as a national adjutant brother. He is a worker, a dedicated husband, father, and friend who simply strives to be the man God has called him to be. And I want to add this as a point of personal privilege. Minister Kennedy truly, truly thank God for saving him. I've I've seen and witnessed grateful people, but I don't care what the setting is. If we can be in here cleaning up and begin to talk about how God saved him, he began to cry. He began to give God praise. He still thanks God. He still has that zeal. He is still grateful for God saving him. Oh, you might want to write that down. Take that as a note. Amen. Never forget. Never forget, never forget, and he never forgets. Just a few weeks ago in Sunday school, he went completely off. Hallelujah, giving God praise for just what he done for saving him. And so I want to say to you today, amen, hear ye the word of the Lord as it shall come from Minister Kennedy. He is a sanctified man, and he is going to preach the word of God. After the choir has given us, we say in CTAC, one of his... The next voice you will hear will be that of Minister Kennedy. I would ask that everyone would rise on your feet and receive the man of God if he shall come and give us the word of life today.
yes. My soul says yes. My heart says yes. And I thank God for all. It's still yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you. I'm trying to keep myself together. Because God has been mighty good to me. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all and all. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thine alone. Tame and change the leper's spots. And melt a heart of stone. Can you help me, church? Can I hear you say, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He, he, he was, it was as snow. One more time. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He, he was, it was as praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Father, we come to you this morning, oh God. We simply want to praise you, God. We want to tell you thank you, oh God, for all that you've done, oh God, for simply sending your son to die for us, oh God. And we thank you this morning for it, oh God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, oh God. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. And we thank you for strength. Mm, God, I ask that you move in this place today, oh God. Touch me, oh God. Strengthen my body, oh God. Touch these lips of clay, oh God. That they may be used to uplift your kingdom, oh God. That they may encourage somebody today, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. You can take your seat. We honor God, who is the head of my life, and I thank him for everything he's done for me. To the Bishop Shaw, we honor you today, sir. To my pastor, the Elder Bruce Elliott Hughes. I get a little emotional when I talk about my pastor. He's touched my life. He's made me a better person, and I thank God for him. 
to the elders, Elder Rose, Elder Wilson, Elder Davis, not sure, Elder Ortiz in his absence, and Elder Donnie Gregory. To all the ministers, Minister Freeman, our presider, we thank you, your grace, sir. Minister Bird, to our chairman, Deacon Chairman Mitchell in his absence, we honor him today, his deacon for him. And to our first lady, Lady Vicki Hughes, we honor you. To our church mother, Mother Durham, assistant church mother, Mother Tally, Mother Freeman, the mothers, all the missionaries and all the saints of God, we thank God for you this morning. <sighs> to my children, I thank God for them. Seemed like the devil was trying to get us this week. One of them got sick the other day, and then the other one got sick yesterday, and I just said, well, I guess I'll leave them at home. And uh, Mariah said, well, can you just leave, you know, logged in on TV so I can watch the service. So I thank her for not complaining this morning <laughs> and watching her sick siblings. All right. And to my wife. I love her dearly. She keeps everything in order for us, and we honor her today. And to my mom, who is watching in Florida, I love her. And I also want to thank uh, the late Deacon Yolanzo Butts. He used to tell me, be faithful. God has something for you. I didn't quite know what he was talking about. But I'm here right now, saved, sanctified, filled with his precious Holy Ghost. And God found me fit to stand up on a Sunday morning and preach the gospel. May not sound like much to you, but you don't know where I was at. So I thank him. He actually so I wore his tie this morning. So hopefully I get a little bit of his strength. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you can meet me in the epistle of Colossians. The first chapter, the ninth verse. Amen. Colossians first chapter, the ninth verse, and stand for the reading of God's holy word. And it reads, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness. We thank God for his word. You may be seated. Joining the military can be a overwhelming experience. We have a lot of military in here. I think I'm the only Coast Guard. You know. I won't hold that against y'all. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you go enlisted or if you in attend boot camp or if you get accepted to one of our nation's service academies. My daughter is currently at the Coast Guard Academy, so we thank God for her. But the minute you do that, your life changes as you start to represent the United States. You are introduced to a new way of thinking and, quite frankly, a different way to process things. I recall heading into boot camp back in 2004 and not really knowing what to expect. It turned out to be vastly different than anything I had ever experienced up to that point. I learned many life lessons and did things I never even thought of. One of those things was marching. <laughs> when I thought about going to boot camp, what was on my mind wasn't really, you got to learn how to march. 
seem a little strange, but marching is one of those things that, that is easy for some, uh, yet extremely difficult for others. Some people can stay on beat as the unit leader counts out the cadence left, right, left. And some people, well, they just can't. It's similar to church. Well, the rules can sing just about any song that you have. And, you know, Mother Jackie, she could get up there and she can turn it out, you know. And me, I have to pick my songs wisely. <laughs> but unlike church, those who can't march often hear their company commander from the distance saying, you're out of step. What are you doing? Can't you hear the cadence? Our life is often like marching at boot camp. We find ourselves out of step with the Lord in our personal walk with him. And God is yelling at you, hey, you, you're out of step. We have so many outside influences coming at us each and every day that it can be overwhelming. It can be draining. I want to talk to you this morning from the, uh, the thought of don't get out of step with the Lord. A little background of our text this morning begins with Paul writing to the Colossian church from his jail cell during his first Roman imprisonment. As we know, Paul had been arrested and he would be arrested multiple times, but, you know, for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul never had actually been to the city of Colossae at this point, uh, which was founded by Epaphras, uh, who at this point had given Paul an update of what was going on. Most theologians believe that Epaphras probably found, founded uh, the church uh, um, or heard the gospel during his Paul's mission to Asia Minor. It is believed that Epaphras found the church probably around Paul's third uh, missionary journey, which you can find in Acts 19. It is said that all of Asia heard the word of the Lord. So that's just a little background on where we are up until this point. So Epaphras had reported to Paul that the gospel of Jesus Christ had changed lives, that the people had a love for Christ. And we know that from chapter 1, verse 8, which says, who also declared us your love for the spirit. However, there were also some things that were bothering him, some teachings that were contrary to Christ. There were those who were trying to mix a little bit of this religion and a little bit of Jesus, trying to mix Christ with philosophy, trying to mix Christ with paganism. They were trying to mix all kind of things with Jesus Christ. This could probably be attributed to the city being a melting pot of people, meaning that people from all over would come because it was part of the main trade route of the times. Does this sound like anywhere we live today? Does it sound like possibly the world we live in today? Does it matter whether you turn on the TV or where you go? There's always somebody trying to mix some of this and some of that with Christ trying to throw this in the pot and that in the pot and mix it in a little Jesus and call it right. But I stand before you today, saints, to tell you that being a Christian is not just another religion. It's not just another way of thinking. It is Jesus Christ. You can't mix anything with him. You can't mix with other ways of looking at life. When you start to do that, you find yourself out of step. You can throw this in the pot and that in the pot. Add some Jesus and it ain't right. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In our lesson text, chapter 9, or chapter 1, verse 9, it reads that ye may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Verse 10 says that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Verse 11 goes on to say, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience 
and long suffering with joyfulness. In the text, we find Paul praying for the saints. He's asking three things here that we may be that we may be filled with the knowledge of him, that way we, we may walk worthy of the Lord and that way we may be strengthened in his power. I thought it was an interesting point that he was, you know, praying that we be filled with the knowledge of him. See, if we aren't filled with his knowledge, if we don't open up our Bible and let the word consume us, let the word get in us, let the word guide us, then how can we live holy? How can we live righteous? How can we live in a manner that's pleasing to God? How can we be strengthened by him for the battles that we must face every day? We simply can't do it. See, we have to have the knowledge of his will. And I can see you looking at me saying, well, Brother Kennedy, what is his will? And I'm glad you asked. If you turn to Ephesians 1 and 5, it says, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to good pleasure of his will. Verse 9, he made known unto us the mystery of his will. Verse 11, in whom we also have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Paul is praying that we will be filled with the knowledge of Jesus, of God's purpose, which is what? Jesus Christ. Verse 10 tells us that in dispensation of fullness of times, we, he might gather together in one all things Christ, both in heaven and on earth. Everything we have comes from him. Everything we need is in him. He is our all in all. Jesus Christ. We can't walk worthy without him. We can't be strengthened without him. And if you aren't in Christ, if he isn't the focal point of your life, you're out of his will. You are simply out of step. When I was dating my wife, we would often be walking in the mall or somewhere. Y'all know I like to buy things. Buy clothes. <laughs> and uh, we would be holding hands. And so not too long ago, I asked her, uh, how did you feel what, when we were walking? We would hold hands, you know. And, and that's typical with my wife. Uh, she answered a question with a question. Why? What is that for? What are you asking me that for? All kind of questions, so on and so forth. Eventually, though, I was able to get an answer out of her, and it was just love. And obviously, you know, I sat there for a minute, and I said, oh, okay, well, the lady who always has something to say about everything gave me a one-word answer. But after prying a little bit, I finally said, Ashley, will you just answer the question? And to which she replied, I feel closer to you. After she answered me, I be, and immediately began to think about our walk with the Lord. Is that not how we feel when we walk with Jesus? We feel a little closer to him. When God is holding our hands, when he's guiding us, when he's leading us, when we're in step with him, we're putting all our faith in Jesus Christ. We're trusting him to guide us through whatever experiences and challenges come our way. When we are in step with Christ, we are acknowledging that he is supreme in our life. And no matter what's going on around us, no matter what is being said to us, no matter what corner the enemy thinks he has us in, our faith is in Jesus Christ. And we are trusting him to lead us. And because he loves us so much, he won't lead us astray. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. There are a couple things that happen when you are in step with God. When you are holding on to his hand. The first is protection. Think about it. 
when you see a parent walking, what do they do? They have their child by the hand, and they're walking, and they're going down the street. Doesn't matter where they are. And then you see that parent snatch the child. The child looks around, what's going on? But something happens. Something comes by. Something moves in the way. But they move them closer. Is that not what Jesus Christ does for us? We may be walking in our lives sometimes, and you feel like you're just snatched up. And God puts you in a place because he's protecting you from this. He's protecting you from that. He might be protecting you from yourself. But when God snatches you up, there's a certain kind of protection. We may not even realize that danger is near, but he snatches us up and sends us a different way. When our hand is in his hand, he gives us a special kind of peace. There's a peace like no other. See, I tried a lot of things in my life, but until I found Jesus, I didn't have peace. Until I found the Lord, my life was in shambles. But one day, I walked in those doors, and I had a different kind of peace. I don't worry about the same things that I used to worry about. Mm. God loves us. And he cares about us. He's letting us know that he's our protector. He is our guide. Colossians 3 and 11 says, but Christ is our all and in all. I don't need anything else. I've got everything in Jesus. Remember when I told you that when you join the military, your life changes immediately. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, something has got to change. When you are marching in a company and a platoon, there's only one leader. I happened to be a unit leader when I was in boot camp. Uh -huh. So I would give out the directions, come left, come right, and had, they had to follow me. Mm -hmm. But when I met Jesus, I cannot lead anymore. I can't be the unit leader. I can't say where I'm going. I have to take my marching directions from him. I have to hold to his unchanging hand. Because when I'm holding his hand, I'm prepared for the battle. When I'm lockstep with him, I'm in connection. I'm praying. I'm fasting. I'm studying my word. We've got to stay connected at all times. When you're connected, you are marching in step with him. Don't get out of step. But Brother Kennedy, what do you do when we get out of step? What do we do when we're marching and we can't seem to get in step? When we're marching and we can't seem to get life right. My brothers and sisters, there's a remedy for that too. See, when you learn how to march, they teach you this thing, and it's called a change step. You be marching along, and you see the companies out, and you change step. Mm. You realize you're not in step with the Lord. You've got to change step. We've got to go down on our knees. We've got to change step in our prayer life. We've got to pray a little bit more. We change step in our fasting life. We've got to fast a little bit more. We've got to change step in our church going habits. We've got to go to church a little bit more. Well, even when I don't feel like going, I've got to press a little bit more. I've got to change step in my Tuesday prayer when my family is depending on me. So I got to change step, change step in my thinking, change step in my talking, change step in my walking, change step in my mind, change step in my heart. 
change step in my feet. I've got to change step because my joy depends on it. My peace depends on it. My love depends on it. My marriage depends on it. My family depends on it. My church depends on it. My pastor depends on it. You've got to change step. I feel like taking a step right now. Something isn't right right now. Whatever it is, I don't know your problems, but all you got to do is change step. Get a little more Jesus. Change step. Dig a little deeper. Change step. Pray a little harder. Change step. Jesus is our all and all. And I'm getting ready to take my seat. But many times I've heard this text preach. And they often explain the error of the Colossian people. But if you really spend a little bit of time in this book, I've been doing a little study on this book. And what I found is. Paul doesn't actually spend a whole lot of time talking about their error. We often get caught up in this. Do Why didn't you do it that way? Why didn't you do that this way? We get caught up talking about the wrong in things. But Paul spent most of the book talking about the ultimate solution. Your marching partner. Your walking partner. Your change step partner. Jesus Christ. He is everything we need. He is everything we can think of. He is our all and all. As a matter of fact, if you read further in the book, it tells you exactly what he is. Verse 13 says, he delivered us from the power of darkness. Verse 15, by him all things were created. Verse 16, he is our all and all. Verse 18, he is the head of the body. He is the beginning. Such a short epistle, but a mighty word. The author is trying to tell us that it all starts with Christ. When we let him lead us, when we are putting all our trust, all our faith in him, he's all we need. Jesus Christ. The Colossian people had faith. Chapter 1, verse 4, since we heard of the faith in Jesus Christ. Where is your faith at? We have to walk with him every minute of the day. We have to talk with him every chance we get. It doesn't matter what stage of life you are in. You could be a seasoned saint. You need Christ. You could be a new saint. You need Christ. You could be struggling in life. You need Christ. I'm standing here right now, and I need Christ. No matter what road you are on, it all has to lead to Christ. We must all constantly refocus on him, constantly recalibrate in him. Don't get in front of him. Don't get out of step with the Lord. As I was meditating on the text, something else stood out to me. Paul was in his jail cell going through his own problems. But he thought that this particular topic was so important to say, not woe is me. But he wrote a whole epistle on the supremacy of Christ in our life. He wasn't worried about himself. But he was worried about us staying focused on Jesus Christ. Everything we do has to be focused and centered on Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, 
If you go to Colossians 4 and 12, you find Epaphras saying what? Who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in the will of God, in knowing Jesus Christ. Two men, same prayer, two different times. Don't you think he wants us to know that we need to focus on Jesus Christ? That we need to stay in step with Jesus Christ. That he has to be the head of our life. All standing. You have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase you have earned leap praise oh but you can not have rest nor be perfectly blessed until all on the altar is laid. Is your own on the altar of sacrifice laid? Is your heart, does the spirit control there's one today who's not in step with Christ the altar is open you can change step right now you can have everything that you need in Jesus Christ he's all you need is there one Perhaps there's one who wants new blessed fellowship with him. And for whatever reason, you've gotten out of step. You can come now. The altar's open. Perhaps somebody just needs prayer. Something in your life is amiss. But if you come now, we'll pray with you.
I've been brought with a price. Jesus changed my heart. Jesus changed my heart. He gave me joy. He gave me peace. He gave me love. He gave me joy. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. 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 Lamb. Redeemed.
you, Jesus. My Lord, now we're going to have the offering. We'll raise an offering for our dynamic speaker, Brother Kennedy. We really, I really enjoyed the word. I don't know if everybody enjoyed it, but I enjoyed it. Keep up the good work. The Lord is going to continually to use you. My Lord. So everyone standing at this time has become to be a blessing to the speaker. That's our word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for that dynamic word that came from the man of God. Oh God, we ask that you, oh God, let us be a blessing to him and his family and his offering. And let it be used to the building of your kingdom. Turn down the strongholds of Satan everywhere. In Jesus' name, amen. Forgive me, but the Lord is doing something for our youth. Glory, hallelujah! Glory, hallelujah! Glory, hallelujah! The Lord is doing something. He's raising up a generation. We're getting in step. Hallelujah! Oh God! Glory, hallelujah! Sometimes we know what the Lord feels like. We know His presence. So they go to crying, hallelujah. They shaking their head, hallelujah. Bishop, they just don't understand it. But we know, we got to tell them, let the Lord come on in. Let your soul be blessed. We got to say yes. We got to teach them to say yes. Say yes, baby. Say yes. Say yes to the Lord. Say yes. It ain't just for us. They going through. We got to teach them to lean and trust on God. Get in step, hallelujah, so that we can be in the will of the Lord. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Come on, help them to praise him. Come on, let's help you praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Let everything, let everything that have breath, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Praise Him for His goodness. Praise Him for His greatness. Praise Him for His kindness. Praise Him for His salvation. Let everything, everything, show glory. Shout hallelujah. Come on, let's praise Him. Praise the Lord. Let the people praise the Lord. Heal! Heal! 
Come on and praise him. Help her to praise him. Help her to praise him. Help her to tell him his goodness. Help her to tell him his greatness. trouble. You better get it while the water's trouble. Dive in the pool. Get in the pool. Praise it. Praise it. Praise it. Yeah. 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 Yeah! He's doing it right now! He's doing it right now! He's doing it right now! Right now! Right now! Woo! You better praise him! You better get what you need! Yes, he is. 
Yes, he is. the move of God to Freeman said he feel like the Lord has saved him today. Come on, let's rejoice with him. Come on, let's rejoice with him. Mother Freeman, you've been praying and you've been praying. Freeman said he testified 
We didn't tell him what to say. He oh. testified. Yeah! 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 Who did it? Who did it? Who did it? What did you tell me in the back? I said, I believe the Lord saved me. Oh! We believe with you. We believe with you. Somebody pray them. Everybody pray them. Ah, yeah. Oh. Jesus. Jesus. spoke through the late Bishop Ted Thomas Sr. standing right here on the pulpit. <laughs>